Comic relief refers to a happy or humorous moment that occurs in the midst of a tense or serious scene. For instance, while discussing a plan to rescue humanity, two men dressed in jeans burst into laughter because of a name that sounds like but. These men, who are minions in the movie Despicable Me, are a prime example of comic relief characters. Their main purpose is to lighten the heavy atmosphere in the world of evil portrayed in the film. However, their antics often end up stealing the spotlight from the main plot, captivating the emotions of the audience. If the audience enjoys these moments, so will the filmmakers. This may lead to the minions receiving more recognition and not just being seen as comic relief characters. After five movies, audiences have become accustomed to their presence and have grown to love them. With a rich history, massive popularity and endearing character, the Minions have captured the hearts of millions of viewers. In this video, we will explore their evolution and rise to dominance. If you want Minions to be a hit with the audience, you need to have the necessary resources. To create the story of these creatures, the filmmakers broke all the natural rules, including the use of the name Minions and Darwin's theory of evolution. As a result, Minions have been around since prehistoric times and have learned that their purpose in life is to serve a villain. In their early days, Minions used to follow T-Rex, a giant beast who ruled over the dining table. However, when they transformed into archers, their employment did not last long, and they found themselves unemployed. It may seem ridiculous, but Minions then applied for the position of architect in Egypt and designed the famous pyramids. However, their criminal activities often ended in failure. Eventually, Minions met Dracula and celebrated the old man's birthday in the scorching sun with a gatto cake. Minion followed Napoleon's order to conquer Europe, but ended up trapped in the cold Arctic. However, using his cleverness and skills, Minion built a civilization that was just as advanced as that of humans. Despite this, something was missing, a worthy villain to serve and fight for. This realization caused the little ones to fall into a deep depression. In order to find a purpose and a villain to serve, the brave Minion, named Kevin, decided to leave the abandoned land, promising to return only when he found a worthy adversary. Accompanying Kevin on his journey was Stuart and Bob, two other confident Minions. Together, they ventured into the free land of the United States and found themselves a suit of jeans, blending in with the hard-working people. They also found a vicious villain named Scarlet Overkill, who gave them their next task, stealing the Queen's crown in England. During this challenge, little Bob even had the honor of being a king for a brief moment, before quickly returning to his humble self. In the end, it was all quite simple. This made Scarlet unhappy. As Scarlet's use of minions became increasingly apparent, the children realized that she was not their rightful owner. Kevin stepped in to protect his friends from danger, and it was then that they met Gru, a young boy. From that moment on, the Minion army became a strong force, joining forces with Britain to complete various missions around the world, often involving battles against notorious villains. The Minions not only have a long history, but also demonstrate a clear development of personality and role in each film. In the first part, during their first mission with Gru, the Minions were simply seen as Minions, insignificant individuals who were expected to follow orders, even if it meant attempting to steal the moon. Their main task was to handle various menial tasks such as repairs, compiling resumes, and conducting experiments, rather than actually attempting to steal the moon. Unfortunately, they were not given any raise in salary. Do I like Minion because of this quality? That is not the reason why Minion chooses not to reveal his personality or true nature. No matter what the task may be, Minion is always willing to give his all and finds joy in it. The loyalty of the T-Horn army cannot be bought. It is a selfless sacrifice, but all Minion desires is to see their loved ones smile. This is similar to how children crave affection from their parents. This quality melts the hearts of viewers and remains a constant throughout the Minion Army's journey. In Despicable Me 2, the amount of screen time for Minions has significantly increased, allowing them to shine in their own little story. Even as they attempt to rescue their friends who have been turned into giant purple creatures, the Minions have so much more to offer. Minions possess the power to fight, flexibility, creativity, and most importantly, unity. In the first part, Minions were merely a foundation for the main plot, 
but their role in part two is much more significant. Without the minions, Gru would lack the final tool to crack the small case. As a result, the central conflict of the film is resolved, leading to a new chapter in both Gru's career and personal life. After two installments of Despicable Me, the minions have left a lasting impression on the hearts of the audience. However, it seems that something is still lacking. It is difficult to distinguish between the minions due to their similarities in appearance and personality. This gap is quickly filled in the first part of the film, where the main characters are introduced, Kevin, Stuart, and Bob. The journey to find their new boss, Gru, begins. Here, the minions are not just generic, jeans-wearing henchmen. Upon closer inspection, we see that Kevin is tall, with straight hair in the middle, while Bob is shorter and has one eye with a different color. Most notably, each minion has a unique color, adding excitement to their world. Kevin is calm and mature, taking on the role of the responsible brother in the group. Stuart, on the other hand, is mischievous and loves playing pranks, with a strong passion for playing the ukulele. Bob is as naive as a child, yet also as mature as an adult. Thanks to their vibrant personalities, the audience, especially children, are drawn to and love these yellow creatures. Throughout the story, the minions also have the opportunity to capture the hearts of viewers with their endearing qualities. For instance, Kevin displays bravery and courage by venturing out of the safety of his comfort zone and even putting a missile in his mouth to protect his friends. The other minions are equally strong and capable, always ready to face any challenges that come their way. From observing their actions, it is evident that these creatures possess leadership qualities and have the ability to impact and influence others. The minions may have been seen as insignificant in the first film, but not because they are timid or feeble. They chose to live like that, and in return, they always have each other, and are constantly surprised by the experience of millions of years of intense survival. Returning to the modern era in Despicable Me 3, Gru finds himself a member of the villainous anti-ninja team, while Minion once again loses his purpose in life. In other words, the ninja team was once again taken away from him, not only stealing the spotlight from the main character, but also organizing a fan meeting with the audience. As a result, the audience is introduced to Mel, the new leader of the Minion team. No longer just superstars, the Minions now know how to stand up and fight. When they fail to convince Gru to return to his villainous ways, they are ready to pack their bags and seek new opportunities. This time, there is no more fighting, and only three of them hit the road as they did before, but all of them are willing to go. However, their specialty still remains, traveling from one place to another, and this time is no exception. All seven of them end up getting captured and quickly become acquainted with each other. Once again, the film affirms Minion's leadership. When they want to do something, Minion takes charge. And when they are feeling bored, Minion remembers the years of love they shared with Gru and decides to return to him. Returning to the second story, this time Minion still has a chance to prove his extraordinary abilities. We are taken back to the 1970s, when a young Gru had just begun his career and was thrust into the clutches of extremely dangerous villains. In this critical moment, the only thing that can save Gru is Minion's unwavering courage. Despite being recently cut off by Gru, when Minion sees a young boy being kidnapped, he and his friends Kevin and the others immediately spring into action, without knowing where they are going or what they will face. Minion fearlessly presses forward, no matter the challenges that may come their way. Thanks to their agility and quick thinking, there is nothing that can stop them for too long. Suddenly, when faced with the most formidable enemy yet, this little creature decides to enroll in Kung Fu. With a strong determination and an ever-positive attitude, Minion is ready to take on anything. The Minion successfully completed the science experiment, and their optimistic spirit ultimately led them to victory against the giant monsters, safely bringing Gru back. The contrast between the Minion's small size and their extraordinary abilities instills confidence in the viewer and showcases the power of seemingly silly and impossible ideas. Whether they are working, talking, singing, or even fighting, it is rare to see a Minion without a smile on their face. This positive energy is contagious, spreading through the screen and capturing the hearts of viewers. Looking back, it is a joyful experience. We were once young and carefree, but now with enough hair and wings, we have even more reasons to love and support each other. I'm going to offer him a proposition once more. Play as time goes by. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>